virtual production is two words that have dominated the conversation in VFX for the past couple of years and also dominated most of my sleepless nights. And as someone who is a new father, let me tell you, competition for keeping me awake at night is quite tight. So the fact that I spend most of my time thinking about virtual production gives you a sense of how big this, this world has become. And the reason for that is that virtual production is complicated. It involves a lot of moving parts, a lot of pipelines, a lot of technologies, some of which weren't necessarily built to, move, to work together, but at the center of all those technologies is motion capture. So to understand what motion capture is for virtual production and the challenges that we've been faced as a result of that, we need to better understand what virtual production actually is. And we can do that by first clarifying what virtual production isn't. So what virtual production isn't, if you ask anyone in VFX, is just LED walls. Now, as much as we understand where the proliferance of the use of LED walls has come from, it's important to recognize that that's not the only thing that's virtual production. Virtual production is actually, it's more about where technologies sit and interact with each other. So virtual production, where you have this Venn diagram of real and digital virtual production sits right in the middle. Now, everyone loves a Venn diagram, but it doesn't necessarily give us a practical insight into what that actually looks like. So if we take a look at a standard virtual production volume from back in the day, this is what you might be looking at. So as far as real is concerned, you have your green screen, which is what you would eventually put your digital environment on, on top of. We have the Vicon camera up top, which is tracking our simul camera. And that's important because any movements that that physical camera makes, we want to be transposed over to our digital environment as well. We need those, tra those transitions and those movements to be completely seamless so that the virtual production essence is, is essentially maintained. We also have physical lights because we need to light objects in the scene. Because this isn't all being done digitally, we have to consider how light is going to interact with objects in that scene. And as a result of all those things coming together, we then have our final composite, which is where we have our real actors against our real green screen, which has the digital background put on top of it. And as mentioned previously, the most important part of that is tracking that camera, because if the movement between the digital cine camera and the real camera are not consistent, then we lose that connection between the real and the digital. So this brings us to ICV effects. Now, I'm sure some of you may be vaguely familiar with a small IP called Star Wars, which is really the brand that brought ICV effects into the public consciousness. I don't think it was since Jurassic Park in 1993 that my mum would even mention the technology used to make a movie as much as we've seen with ICV effects and virtual production. So what these volumes tend to look like is you'll have these huge LED walls, different shapes and sizes, but this is the, the essential layout. You'll have these large volumes, you have camera tracking inside, and then all of the actual digital content is put on those LED walls. So what this looks like in a more kind of practical breakdown, you'll have a scene like this, which was uh, done by Lux Machina on the V stage in the UK. Up top, we have the Vicon cameras, and they are tracking our, the, our scene. We have the LED wall with the content pushed on top of that. We have the cine camera, which again, that's filming the footage while also being tracked and affecting the location of the digital world. And also, we have the thing that we're actually shooting. We have our character who's in the foreground. Now, an important thing to consider is that what we're doing here isn't anything especially unique from a motion capture perspective. We are capturing the motion of a camera and streaming that data in real time. This itself isn't especially complex. What makes it complex is the environment it's been used in. So to think about this, we can kind of return to the core principles of what we want in a motion capture volume. Essentially, we want as few obstacles as possible. Any obstacles we have that come between the markers and the cameras introduces a risk of occlusion, data noise, so we want as few, as few obstacles as possible. So we want to isolate that subject. We want as much coverage as possible. The more cameras we have in a volume, the better the coverage, the more confidence we can have that the data caught will be robust and accurate. Now that takes time. It takes time to set up a volume, it takes time to optimize the space, it takes time for the cameras to heat up. All these things come together to ensure that your mocap volume is enhanced, is robust, and is ready to get the best data possible. And likewise, we want as few different things going on in the scene as possible. We want our motion capture volume to worry about the, the object we are tracking and nothing else. Now, if we take a look at the ICV effects stage, we have set dressing, we have props, we have environmental effects, we have actors who are going to move around. 
we also have a limit on where we can put the motion capture cameras. We can no longer just have them every, everywhere along the truss to get that decent volume coverage. We have to have them high and out of the way, usually on top of the LED walls. We will also see things like special effects, such as squibs, pyrotechnics, fire, rain. Never in a million years did I think I'd be speaking to motion capture users about how rain is affecting their volume. But I see VFX introduce that, that new set of challenges. So what this basically means is that everything that we typically want from a motion capture stage, we have the opposite with RC VFX. We have a lot of challenges that aren't presented from a technical perspective so much as a cultural perspective. We need to understand how these tools are used in these spaces in a completely different environment to what we've perhaps been used to previously. So to address this, we organized our thinking into three core areas. One being collaboration and education, making sure we understand the use case of these tools as well as we do the actual technical requirements. There's the software. We need to make sure that our algorithms and our tracking is kept as tight as possible to give us the best data we possibly can. And then there's always the hardware output. What physical products can we create that will enhance virtual production for these studios? So on that note, we can take a look at some of the stuff we built to address this. We're going to move to Shogun Live. And in here, we are going to have a camera track. So if we take a look in our volume, we have one camera that's been tracked by all these cameras up here. So if we can have George come and give us some movement. So one of the first things we did was enhance the algorithms we have that track these objects. We took a look at our engineering market, which is always focused on, on robots, on drones, on mechanical application. And we took some of those algorithms, brought them into our VFX package Shogun, and managed to make the most of the unique latency benefits that that facilitated. Connected to that, we also have streaming that data into Unreal Engine. So if we go to Unreal, please. So if you could just keep the camera moving around the scene, please, George. So now we are taking that data with the lowest latency possible straight into the game engine. And we can see that all those movements, whether it's a rotation or a translation, everything the camera does has been streamed in real time straight into the game engine. And that's absolutely critical for virtual production because if what we do with the camera in the physical environment is not matched by what's going on in the digital environment, then essentially we lose the effect. That relationship between digital and real is absolutely crucial to the virtual production volumes working effectively. And we also have connected to that, obviously, the hardware implications. So on top, we have our active crown, and these LEDs are being tracked by the cameras you see above you. The way we've approached this is in addition to providing decent tracking, we also want to have a, a product that recognizes the practical limitations or the practical implications of working in these environments. For example, something that we've discovered was that quite often these crowns get dropped. Now, one of the most important things from a tracking perspective is that the shape we have here is maintained. As soon as that shape changes, we no longer have confidence that we can track it effectively. So one of the things we did, in the event that something drops or gets sat on, all these sorts of things happen on set, we use materials that will ensure whatever people throw at it, we can maintain that layout. Now, that's not something we're particularly worried about on previous products, but ICVFX has introduced all these considerations to such an extent that we need to consider the practical environment that these products are used in. So that just gives a, a brief summary as to how virtual production has been addressed by Vicon. Thank you very much for your time, folks. If anyone's interested in our markerless solution, please take a walk around the corner and sign up. It's pretty brill. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of SIGGRAPH. Cheers, folks.